All right. Welcome to Craft Chocolate TV, everybody. My name is Dylan. My name is Chuck Kirshner. My name is Greg Alexander. And we're going to do something unique that we haven't done before. We are going to do a cacao pulp tasting guided by Chuck, who can tell us what is in front of us right now. Wait, wait, wait. And we also have with us... Ramon Señor Bevin. Ramon. Ramon. Por favor, juntar con nosotros. Ramon. Yo lo digo en inglés. My name is Ramon. <laughs> and Ramon will open the pods for us, hopefully. Ramon is the administrador. He's the administrator of Zorzal Cacao. At Zorzal Cacao, we have different clones that we've planted. Um, this is a local clone named after the experimental station Mata Larga. So it's called ML22. When clones are selected, they're selected for a uh, number of things. One is, for example, disease resistance, um, compatibility. Can they pollinate themselves? Are they self-compatible? Um, but also size of beans, productivity of the tree, how many pods um, per tree, and how many beans within those pods. So those are some characteristics traditionally people have looked for. I think now also people look for flavor. So combining all those, depending on what you're looking for, whether it's productivity or flavor, um, we planted different clones at Reserve Zorzel. This is ML22, which is again, named after the experimental station, Mata Larga, and I just dropped it on the ground. <laughs> Who gets to eat the ground beans? <laughs> which is actually, these are big, this is a big pot. It's a relatively big pod, um, pulpy beans, large seeds. Cuánto gramos por semilla? Cool, at least one, huh? You can see, it looks slightly underripe. Yeah, maybe a little bit. So one thing with pulp is you have different bricks levels, floral. Yeah. Um, floral. Uh, so there's sugar content. Yeah, exactly. Some will be like pulpy, like a lot of pulp on outside of a bean, like ML has that. We're going to try another one that does not have much pulp. Um, so sugar content will range between like 14%, 18%. Um, but go ahead on flat on flavor. What, what do you guys see here? I mainly get floral. There's some acidity in there not, too. not that sweet. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's the underripeness is the uh -huh. less sweet. Okay. It's interesting because the pulp, the way it opens, it seems like it's ripe. I know. But, so one thing I've been doing recently is I've been eating the seed, tasting the pulp and eating the seed, and I find that the riper, the the more perfectly ripe, the fruit is the better the seed tends to taste inside. The yeah. less astringent and less bitter. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's Which true. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, totally. But it seems like a astringent bean. Mm -hmm. Which is probably that slightly underripe. Right. So this pod is ICS um, 95, which Ooh, is one of the most popular um, clones, I'd say, in the world. Yeah. Because it's disease resistant to um, manelia. Um, and some other things, so there's good productivity. Um, just just uh, as Chuck sort of mentioned earlier, um, when uh, all the clones or cultivars uh, have names, so the first letters are usually where it was developed, and then the second number is usually like the experiment or the or the specific tree um, sometimes. So ICS-95 ICS is Imperial College Selection, um, done out of Trinidad, and uh, 95 is the specific tree that that budwood came from that has been replicated since. Right. And we planted this here because it is self-compatible and pollinated itself. Um, it has a great flavor. It has good productivity. Um, it's, is, just, it's not very pulpy, I've noticed, ICS-95. No, no. This is one that we have a lot at home in Hawaii. Oh, totally different flavor. So this, a lot more fruit comes through. Mm -hmm. And where you want to talk about the bean? Like how you would Taste some flavor in the bean. Uh, well, as Dylan said, this is really fun when you got to talk while you're doing it. Um, you can chew it and you taste a little of the flavor, um, but the best way to taste the flavor is you chew it and then the residue left in your teeth. This is really, really pretty. The residue left in your teeth gives you like the more sort of subtle flavors that are in the bean rather than trying to, it's kind of like, you know, instead of tasting chocolate liquor, which is 100%, you're tasting, you know, you're tasting kind of the residue of the bean instead of the whole bean. Um, this is the same thing. You can actually I, see, I, yes. maybe you can see. This but, is a, like a lighter color bean than the ML22, the much darker color bean. This is, um, and so the idea, Roselle, was to plant different lots by clone. 
So it's kind of like wine. We wanted to have Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Had different areas where you could get a clone if you wanted to make a certain chocolate from a, a specific varietal. And you liked this one, that one, because it was self-compatible. Self-compatible, yeah. so we could put one full lot. And there, so another thing is there's a lack of research in clones, but ICS-95 is very well researched. Yeah. And all the databases I looked at was like, yep, mm. self-compatible. Which one is this one? So this, this is me, ICS-39. Oh, right. This looks like the first really perfectly ripe one. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. So one of the ways you can tell how ripe it is is see how far the yellow goes to the outside. If it's like green um, towards the edge of it, it means it's a little underripe. And see how the yellow goes all the way to the edge. It's not because the skin is yellow. This is true for other colors um, when they ripen. It's it's the the yellowness of the the pod itself. Now this one's much sweeter. Yep, agreed. Um, it's got some tartness. Yep, and I actually think there's kind of like a nice balance between uh, the fruit and the florals in it. Like I'm, I'm getting to get like um, like peach. Yeah, kind of yeah. Like I was gonna say stone fruit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Now we're gonna go into the um, white bean arena. So very commonly people associate Criollo with white bean. We do not think this is a white bean. It is a clone that was found on a farm near here that we propagated. Um, after we looked into it, we think this is actually a um, clone from Puerto Rico, experimental station, hmm. potential ICS. Hmm. Um, but the, the, the shape of the pod, the flavor, it's likely not like a pure Criollo. And I don't know if we talked about it, but this is the actual fruit. Uh, oh, when yeah, when yeah. we say cacao oh. is a fruit, the yeah. pulp is the fruit. We make chocolate from the seed. Wow. Mm. It's interesting. that We talk about how like white seeds tend to be a little less flavor. This pulp has a lot less flavor mm -hmm. than any of the other pulps. Right? It's not yeah. bad. It's just like... It's the most bland. It's the most bland of any of the pulps. It's true. And so I don't you know if there's the any experiment that has been done yeah. with, um, tying correlating. the flavor, correlating the fruit. No flavor to the actual flavor of the chocolate and how it affects so look the at, seed. Look at what Ramon did. He's cut up the different clones and you can see the actual oh, that's inside uh -huh. color of each bean. Oh. It's it really fast. So ML. Like... So that's the ML, yep. the local Matalaga clone. He says it, 95. So 95 seems to be always in it's such a neutral flavor. Yep. It has that kind of, it's a lighter purple yeah. usually. And I can eat these raw. I mean, it's really neutral and, yeah, and good yeah, flavor. Yeah. It's why a lot of people like ICS-95. It's it's ICS-39 like... and this is the white bean. Yeah. It's, it's not, really like accessible. Yeah, it's in, inoffensive. It doesn't necessarily mean that make the most sort of like strikingly flavored things, but as we've talked about before, a lot of it really comes down to fermentation and how you ferment the beans. Mm. And yep. like, you know, like what the flavor is out of it, a lot of it just comes down to fermentation. Can you tell us what's going on on the outside of this pod? Yeah, I mean, it's just disco. This is natural for this type of clone to have this discoloration. It's not a disease, it's not yeah, a rot. Right. But it's a lot of people natural. would go through and look at that in the orchard and be like, oh, that one's yeah, no yeah. good. Yeah, no, but it's not But actually, it's perfectly it's right. It's just a, um, genetics. Yep. This is um, a hybrid. So planting design on the reserve was we planted a lot of grafted trees, but we also planted just seedlings from um, basically seeds that you can't tell what actual clone it came from. So they got pollinated and took them from a pod um, the majority of cocoa in Dominican mm. Republic is a melanado I'm excited from Upper something. Amazon. Um, but again, the, the kind of different designs that we planted here is for a reason. This is nice. Grafted trees give you a specific clone productivity, but there's also oh. more risk, more maintenance of grafted trees. We're sometimes just planting hybrid. Um, it has like a fantastic flavor mm -hmm. and can be more resistant, well, easier to manage. Very like ripe banana. Yeah, like except, ri exactly like ripe banana, or maybe even getting, like ripe plantain. You're still getting right? the tartness. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a light color too. There, yeah, there's a greenness to the back of it too. The bean like, tastes good, too. It? Yeah, it's really it is green. So these are just some clones yeah. we have here. Um it's fun to experiment with these. Yeah. Um and I think like right now, Zorzel cacao would be like a mix of all these yeah. in a bag. Um when we get to a certain point, I think maybe in five years, we'll start doing this like you can get Select just ICS-95. ICS yeah. Or this, because these will ferment differently. Different we, bricks level, different pulp, so different flavor. One of the things that we all tasted together was right. the cacao wine. Mm. I think in the future it would be yeah. really fun to experiment with all that the different be. pulps where you can yeah, isolate yeah. the juice. Single origin wine. And then make yeah. single origin cacao varietal wines. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we, we tried to do at one point is Hacienda Azul, the guys we work with in Costa Rica, they have the um, like six different clones that um, uh, Cartier, 
sort of recommends using together, including ICS-95. And so uh, we had used their mix of beans for a while, and we actually asked them to ferment individual boxes of just just one clone yeah. to see what those taste like. The challenge is, uh, it's it, like as Chuck was, was alluding to, it's actually kind of tough to get the flavor of a single clone because you have to have enough... Um, pods from like that one yeah. clone, and most people yeah. are planning a variety of things. Mixed, yeah. So like, but you know, so like your your fermentation boxes hold six hundred kilos. So do like a quarter of, ton of dry weight. Yeah, but but like six hundred kilos of wet, of, of wet yes, bean. Correct. So that's like a lot of pods you need to have yeah, to do a single box of a single clone. So we do sell the white bean to a company um, uh, in Quintro in, in France. Oh yeah, and we do we we put these beans in a bag basically or like a yeah. mesh yeah bag and no. so there's some cross fermentation there but it does isolate at least the beans yeah um, thank you so much thank you yeah that was fun yeah hopefully you enjoyed watching us eat things and spit them out <laughs> until next time bye, bye.